another day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I try and sad and hurt my bones, but the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, gracious Father, we come approaching your throne of grace through your son Jesus Come in the way to come. First of all, we just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you for your loving kindness, your mercy. Thank you for your goodness and your stretched out hand to deliver and to let the captives go free, Lord. This morning, God, we pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding concerning your word. Most of all, God, we pray for an obedient spirit to obey it. Help us, God, that we don't add nothing to your word. Help us, God, that we won't take anything away from your word. But, Lord, that we are rightly divided by your spirit and by your great power, Lord. We pray for those that have coronavirus, Lord, and other viruses out there come from Africa. Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you have mercy on our souls and deliver us, O oh God, by your spirit and by your great power. Those that have high, high, high blood pressure, sugar diabetes, heart problem, foot problem, back problem, leg problem, Lord, I even remember this body, Lord. You paid it all. With your stripes, you say we're healed. With your blood, we're cleansed. We sanctify them. And by your word, we pray that you heal and virtue flow through our body like a river, Lord. We ask in the name of Jesus, Lord. And then heaven to take care of this temple, God. By your spirit and by your great power. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding how to do it. And it'll be your spirit, Lord, to bring it forth. We ask in the name of Jesus, oh God, we pray for that backslider, that son of man, that woman, that child, that woman on the street, no place to go, God. Give them a mind that want to be saved, Lord, and a mind that want to stay saved. In Jesus' name, we ask, oh God, and God, we are thank you, God. We pray for the president and those in authority, Lord, Republican, Democrats, Lord. Let there be peace in the White House, Lord. Let there be peace in our house. Those that are not saved in that White House will be saved. Those that are not saved in our house, God, Lord, you'll save them. In Jesus' name, we ask, O oh God, and God will thank you for that. And everybody said, Amen, amen and amen, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap, amen, for who he is. He's an awesome God. Lord, have mercy, God. I got a powerful message here, amen, that I dealt with before, but I got more knowledge on it. And we're going to be dealing with Christmas. And we want to find out, is Christmas in the Bible? What you shaking your head over there, Brother Joe? It is. Get a little hand, guys. My sister's been down to the chair. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank You haven't read it in the Bible? Okay, so Brother Joe said, yeah, read it, so you ain't going to find it in there. So what we want to do is find out what God's Word says about it. We can find the principles of what's going on today. That's in the Bible, the principles. But Christmas is not there because God didn't tell man to do that. And we're going to find out also that he didn't tell a man to celebrate his son's birthday. Now they, what they're doing on Christmas, I'm telling you, I got more knowledge now. So I'm, I'm going to unload it this morning. And then it's going to be on you. Who's going to be on? It's going to be on you, and man, and you can do whatever you want to do with it. You can throw it to the side, kick it to the side, or take it and do something with it. Now, Christmas is something that puts people in bondage. What it does, you already can't pay your bills, but because Christmas is one day, ain't but one day, that one day coming up, you got to go buy. No, you ain't got to do that. You ain't got to go buy. See, uh, what I tell them over here, don't give me nothing for Christmas because I ain't going to get you, you nothing. Uh, somebody called that one. And that way we even. Now, if you buy me something for Christmas, I'm going to thank the Lord and thank you for it, but I ain't getting you nothing. Oh, it's going to be on this morning. But it's going it, it, it's tight, but like Brother Johnson says, tight, but it's right. It's going to be right. I didn't chew it. I didn't come with me to page 1248. 
page 1248, and here is what Jesus Christ told us what to do. Amen. He told us, amen, what to do in his word, amen, concerning what to remember. Now, he didn't tell us uh, to remember his, his, his birthday, but he did tell us to remember the Lord's son. Mm -hmm. And we'll see that in the word. So what we want to do is follow what the word says. This is why we call it Victor and Jesus Bible Center. We said it. We looked at every rock and see what's under there. If something crawling, we want to find out what it is. So we can bring it out to the light. And once we bring it out to the light, then we can make a decision whether we want to go back under that rock and get back in darkness. Well, I'm going to go back under that rock once I find out the truth. Now, the scripture says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free or make you free. I don't know which translation you're reading. The King James say make. Another translation says set. Just go free. That's what I need to tell people. Whatever translation you're reading, just go free. So let's look and see 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, the 23rd verse. For I have received of the Lord that which I also have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. When he gave thanks, he break it and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. This doing what? So he told us to remember the Lord's supper, his death. That's what he told us to remember. He didn't tell us to remember his birthday. But he did tell us to remember his what? His death. All right, that's so You're going to see why. You're going to see why he wants to remember his death. Lord have mercy. Do this remember me after the same manner also he took the cup. When he stopped saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood, this do as often you drank it and remembers of me. 26. For as often as you eat this bread, you drink this cup, you do show the Lord death till he what? He wanted us to remember his death. What he did in his death? He died for what? For our sin. That's what he wants us to remember what he's done for us so that we can go free. I like free. So he died so that I can go free. So since he's done that for me, I'm, I'm going to remember that. Now, I used to celebrate Christmas, but after I found out the word of God, it wasn't in the Bible. First of all, uh, it didn't got, got me really confused it wasn't in the Bible. Well, I'm trying to figure out why we don't. Well, we've done it because that's what man say is all right to do. And he'll use a scripture. I'm, I got some scriptures now that he'll use so that you can do it, but it don't line up. It don't work. It don't line up. And I can use scriptures too that don't line up. So what we want to do is make sure that we understand that man using Jesus Christ's birthday to get the gifts. Did y'all catch that one? How would you like somebody to get your gifts and it's your birthday? How would you feel if somebody getting your gift and it's supposed to be your birthday? No, I wouldn't feel too good about that. You're getting all my stuff here and I ain't get nothing. And you're using my birthday to get it? Where did preacher come from? Beaumont, Texas. Jim, 777 03 1375. He's Lucas. Thank you. Come with me now, and we're going to look at, we're going to go in a little bit further to what the Word says. Come with me to page 1038. As the Matthew is the second chapter, the 10th verse. This is how man, let's start with that first verse. That's going to be Matthew, the second chapter, as page 1038. Yes, sir. Matthew, the second chapter. Matthew, the second chapter. And let's look at that, uh, that first verse. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, and the day of Herod the king, behold, I came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. How many wise men came? Mm -hmm. 
Three. How many? Three. Two. Three. Three. What is that in the Bible? <laughs> That's true, Brother Mike. And I, and I used to say three, two. And I went back and I studied. I said, let me go find out. Huh? Oh, you find you, you find three wise men in the Bible eat the page, Brother Joe. I'm bold over here now. I'm kind of bold when it comes down to the word. Especially when I've been studying. It saw the star that followed the star right. to where Jesus Christ was. Right. Now, but it don't say how, how many wise men it was. But it if you look at a, a movie, you see three. Yeah. And that's true. That, that's the movie. Sometimes movies don't be right. <laughs> that's right, Brother yeah. Joe. That's why you got to study the word. That's why we call it being Jesus. Bible study. Bible study. We study. That might have been another translation book, though. It could have been. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that. Because yeah. uh, oh, some translation do put things in there. Because yeah. that's their translation. To, what man wanted to be. That. He'll put it in there. Yeah, because he got itchy ears. So you're you going to put it in there and make your ears be all right. Yeah. So it have three. Sure. For here in the King James, mm -hmm. it don't suck. Mm -hmm. How many it is. Now, you go to the book of Luke. If you go to the book of Luke 2 and 8. They call them shepherds. And I call wise man in Luke. So Luke has a different writing. And Luke's writing, he called them shepherds. Matthew's writing, he called them wise men. So, the, and so some people will probably read Luke and say, no, it said shepherd. Then somebody might read Matthew and say, no, it said wise men. Well, that's two different accounts. And that's the way they saw it. And that's what they wrote. They wrote what they saw and what they understood. So what we do here is give it all to you. Mm -hmm. Give it what? Oh. Let's give it all to you. That way you got it all. Now you got you got Matthew. You get a lot of hex out of there with some of you. Hey, good to see how to sit in the house again. It's been a bit of a while, my God, but she looked the same. <laughs> so here we see here that uh, the two and one are going to tell them who they are. Now, let's go to the 11th verse, and then we're going to pick up here who they brought the gifts to, who the wise men brought the gifts to. All uh, right, so let's look at the 11th verse. And when they would come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary and his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Who they worship when they said him? Jesus. That's Jesus. They worship Jesus. That's right. They fell down and worshipped Jesus. Jesus, the baby, the baby Jesus here. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him, what him had? Who? Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Who, who, now, who did they give the gift to? Mary, Joseph, or they give it to? Jesus. They give it to the baby, Jesus. They brought it to him because that's his birthday. Who birthday? Jesus. That's his birthday. Gold and frankincense and merit. I like the word. The word of God sets me straight. I might be crooked, but when I get in that word, it lines me back up straight again. It cleans me up. It washes my mind when it becomes holy and pure. It ain't all corrupt because the word do that. It, it cleans you. Lord, have mercy, God. And that's all I've here, Lord. And at 12 verse, and being one of God in the dream that he should not return to Herod, they departed to, his, to their own country another way. Herod wanted to know where the baby Jesus was. Yep. Why do you think he wanted to know that? Well, he he wanted, that's it, Brother Joe. He wanted to take him out. Because they heard there's a king coming. Yep. So Herod is a king. Yep. So Herod was afraid that Jesus was going to take his king. Uh huh? Oh, uh, you still king? Where Herod at? Yeah. He dead. Jesus still the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. Give all the hands out for our brother Peter. That's God's brother. Good to see him. That's brother, brother uh, Charles Fred. Hey, coming visit. That's a blessing. Uh, so, Lord, the blessing is here. Brother, we dealing with, with 
Christmas and we want to find out if that's in the Bible. We couldn't find it in there. So we find it out the scriptures that man will use to justify why he's doing it. He used, uh, <coughs> justify why he's doing it. Because this is the season. Jesus, y'all ever heard it said Jesus is the reason for the season? <coughs> yeah, he's the reason for every season. I'm glad I got to wait this every December to have Jesus in my season. He's my season. He's the same yesterday, today, our day, every day. It, forever, Lord. He, I ain't wait. Don't. Let me back with you all the notes. So he's the reason for my season all the time, every day. So when Christmas comes, I know the children fall on the 25th. So what day is it going to be this, this year? Saturday. You ain't going to have no church that Sunday to celebrate his birthday because it fell on the 25th, which is a Saturday. Now I'm going to come to church on the Sunday. Hope y'all walking with me. Now, one thing about Super Bowl, do they ever, they ever change their day? No. What Super Bowl is on? What day? That's Sunday all the time. Mm -hmm. Let me get back there while they're in the nose. My God, my God. You're going to learn something when you come over here. You ain't going to leave out the same way you came in. There's no way you're going to come to the Indian Bible Center and you're going to leave out here knowing nothing. Because you're going to learn something. Now, you tip it depending on what you do with it when you learn it. Uh, but do you still want to stay in bondage to Christmas? I'm talking about. And y'all really can't pay your bills. And now you can charge all that stuff on your car. And your car was already paid out. I don't know where you got the rest of it from. Let me go with it, Lord. I ain't charging nothing. I had somebody tell me, and I wrote it down. They told me uh, to get uh, some uh, gift cards and, and send for Christmas. I said, right, well, what if I ain't got no money to buy? How you gonna buy a gift card without no? Mm -hmm. Let me love you, Lord. Help Jesus. Amen. That's why I got to ask the Lord to help me. So they brought, they, we, we see where they brought the gifts to, they brought the gifts to Jesus. Then they, they warned, God warned the, the wise men, don't go back to the old heaven. He's he trying to find out where the, where the child is at. Don't go back that way. And he's gonna try to find out from y'all. I want y'all to go back another way. So God, if you're working for God and living for God, God's going to warn you about a lot of things that's set up for you where you won't fall into the trap. But if you're working for the devil, guess what's going to happen? You're going to fall in the trap. Don't work for the devil and fall in the trap. Get out the trap at the end of now. But preacher, what I need to do, you need to repent. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Let the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse you. And ask him to come into your life. Then ask him to teach you his word. Let the dust off that Bible, because when I'm giving you this morning, you can go read it tomorrow, the next day, and the next day. It ain't going to change. Now come with me now. We're going to see the principles here that they were doing this back in the Old Testament with the tree. I'm talking about the Christmas tree. Christmas tree ain't nothing new. So what I did, I what I did, I Googled, I wanted to find out actually when Christmas started. Christmas started on December the 25th, 336 AD. That's what AD is. What B C is. Before Christ. That's what it is. So when you see AD, it's after his death. So it was 360 after his death. So now I got a record from Google. I got Google, Google tell me that that's the, the history. I do a little history study too. So in my history study, I take it and combine it in with Christmas to find out how it got started. So the Romans is the one that started it. They're the one that invented Christmas. Uh, my God. So you will have, here's, here's what you're going to get from Google. You're going to have some people going to agree with it, and there's going to be some people going to disagree with it. How do you know which one to go with? You're going to have to study the word to see which one right. Don't check all right now. In order to find out which one is right, 
you're going to have to know some words to find out who's right. Because one little group over here saying is okay, and I got another group I said is saying is a pagan religion. It's not Christianity. Uh, which is it? Which is it? Which is it? Is a pagan religion. When I get through with this message, you're going to find out which one it is. It's in the Word. Okay. Oh, we're going to make a claim to you today so you can know. You ever know, says, uh, do you, do you, she want to know which one is it? Why, why is the Word going to show you which one it is? Come with to page 833. Jeremiah 10 and 2, page 833. Jeremiah, and then you're going to see why man that is wise not telling you the truth about Christmas. It's in the Word. It lets you know why they're not telling you. That is not biblical. Oh, it's awesome stuff. Give a lot of hands out for Brother Charles. Lord, I thank God for it. Amen. Bless God. Brother Charles, we're dealing with Christmas this morning. Amen. Amen. Bless God. With the Word. Amen. We're dealing with the Word. Find out it's not in the Bible. So we're going to look at Jeremiah 10 and 2. Jeremiah 10 and 2. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the what? You know what a heathen is? All right. I had to look up the word heathen. He didn't mean a person not a Christian. That's what, that's what a heathen is. They're not a Christian. He said, I'll learn their ways. So what ways are they doing? They, they celebrate Christmas and putting Jesus in there. And then they got Santa Claus in there. Mm -hmm. And they, some of the Christians doing this. Some of the Christians saying, tell your children that Santa Claus gave it to them. Is that the truth? No. That's a lie. Will a lie tarry in the sight of God? Okay. Well, the word said, lie, you won't tarry in the sight of God. So you need to tell your children the truth, Christians, and let them know that God bless you with the money to get them the gift, and let them know Christmas is not in the Bible. Amen. So if you're going to celebrate Christmas and you're going to give them something, tell them the truth. Y'all don't know it? But they don't know. So that's why you have to tell the children. The children don't know. The children go on along with what you tell them. Yeah, how they was raised. Sure, you have to tell them the truth. Uh, they, they told me Santa Claus bought my gift. And if I open my eyes, I'm going to throw some sand in my eyes. Uh. <laughs> I, didn't go, I didn't go look for Santa Claus. <laughs> I slept. <laughs> and waited until it was time to go look for the gifts. You know, you better get a lot of it in the nose. <laughs> amen. So here we see, amen, bless God, that what the word of God is telling me, amen, that this thing here, he said, don't take, don't, don't follow the, the way of the heathen. He said, because uh, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. You know, when they look at the, at the heaven, they, they're dismayed of, of what's going to happen in the, in the, in the heaven. Oh, yeah. You, you know, when the thunders and lightnings and everything going on. Well, when it's thunder and lightning, I shut up. And I, I said, well, Lord, you're doing your work. Yeah, yeah. Help me be still while you finish. Amen. So I'm not afraid of the thunder and lightning because God is the one that's in control of it. Mm -hmm. And guess what? He's going to take care of me. I'm not going to take me an umbrella and go out there while it's thunder and lightning because that's a raw one. Yeah, right. And you are the ground. Yeah. If that lightning hit that thing and it, it got iron in that in that uh, 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 uh upper road, it's gonna take you out or uh, shoot straight shoot straight through you. Yeah. So I got knowledge no, don't be have no umbrella while it's lightning and cold. Oh, Lord, <laughs> Lord, I best get me a plastic one if I'm gonna get me one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I I trust God to take care of it, but I'm not gonna tempt it. Look at that third verse. So the custom of the people are what? Fine. That's a custom. Yeah. What a Christmas is. Christmas is a custom. So that's a custom. He said they what? They vain. They vain. Watch, watch what else he said here. This is an old time. One cut in a tree. So what, what they do in the tree? Cut it. They cut it. They cut it down. 
And what you do? You bring, we bring, then we bring it in half, and what, we got to get a stand because it can't stand up by itself. Why? Because the word says about it. Uh, for the cutting of the people of vain, for one cutting the tree out of the forest, the working of hands of, of, of a working with the axe. Cut it down. Cut it down. Now we got some Christmas tree going on here now. Mm -hmm. They deck it with what? Silver and gold. Back then in the old time, all they had was silver and gold and decking. What we decking today with? Uh -huh. Lights, bulbs, <laughs> stall, all kinds of stuff we put on that tree. Oh, yeah. I was out of the tree standing up with all that stuff. Yeah. Lights. Oh, you got lights all around. Boy, they look good too. You know, and that's the thing that can get you is that it looks good. Mm -hmm. But it ain't good for you. Because it put you in bondage to paying it back. And fastened with nails and with hammers that it move not. So they take a hammer and they nail it down and they fix a box plug where it can stand that box and it can't fall. Mm -hmm. That's the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Now look what else he says here. That's, Lord, have mercy, God. Look at that fifth word. They upright in a palm tree, but speak not. That tree talk to you? And they must need be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Need also in them to do good. He's talking about the people that are fooling around with them trees. Yeah. Yeah. They can't do good, they can't do evil. So don't be afraid of them. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. What a word. Uh, it's going to be on today. So we look here and we see that Jeremiah is warning me not to do that. All right, let's go to Exodus 23 and 8, and you're going to see why man is doing it. Oh, it's good stuff here. Exodus 23 and 8, page 92. Exodus 23 and 8, and thou shalt take no, take no what? Yeah. He said, y'all do not take no gift. You're going to see why you're not. See, I don't, that's why I don't take gifts. But if you give it to me, I'm going to thank you for it, but I ain't giving you that. <laughs> I'm not going to take it where I, I, you're going to blind me. Watch that now. Because that's what the word says. Take no gift, because watch what the gift will do. For the gift blinded the wise. So if you wise in the word of God, you know what the word of God says about Christmas, you take the gift, you're not going to say the thing to your members out there, because then they ain't going to get you nothing no more. So what you're going to do, you're going to take that gift and then blind your eyes and say, I ain't telling them nothing, even though I got knowledge and know the name of God. I ain't telling them nothing. Then I lose my members. I won't get no gifts. They'll find another church to go celebrate Christmas with. They ain't coming back over here. They what? They ain't coming back over here. They can't play Santa Claus over here. Watch out now. Mm -hmm. And lie to the children, so I think we ain't going back because we can't have no fun. Uh, so the gift, and then for the gift, blinded the wise and pervert the word of the righteous. So when I look at the word pervert, it means to turn from the truth. That's what pervert means. They'll take the truth and they turn it from those that want to do right. They twist it. Make it believe it's all right to do it. Because it's Jesus Christ's birthday. I had a brother, hey amen, he, he, he said, uh, uh, do you celebrate uh, uh, Jesus Christ's birthday? I said, no. I texted him back and said, no. He said, well, that's the day, you know, you get all the gift. And I, and I texted him back and said, well, God didn't get you to do that. And then it dawned on me later. I said, oh, Lord, have mercy of God. I didn't get a chance to text him back. And it dawned on me later, see, one, one thing about God, if you want to do right, he give you more to understand what right is. That's right. He'll give you less. Because now I got more about Christmas than I did last Christmas. Than I did most study. So as I do my study, I got more stuff on my paper. The more I study, the more I got information on it. That's how it just worked that way. You learn more. So then I thought about it. I said, okay, that brother... 
want to know if I'm celebrating Jesus so he can get some gifts. He said he can get some gifts. Yeah. Off of Jesus Christ's birthday. And but I told tell him, no, I ain't heard from the brother no more, but show sure love open house. He ain't got really going to know. Lord, have mercy, God. So God, gonna, uh, he going to bless your socks off if you do it his way. Because right, okay. now you, that one day that you spent all that money on, you didn't get caught in that. Now you got your money left over and everybody else coming knocking on your door. Watch out. They're knocking on your door. Yeah. Your door, because now they ain't got no money. And they want you to help them with their bills that they spent Christmas on. Uh, they get over here, Lord, that in the notes. Let's go to, uh, let's look at another one. Hey, Amen. Let's look at another one. So, uh, we're going to go to, uh, God warned Israel about this. He warned Israel. But they didn't listen. They went and did their own thing. Got themselves in trouble. Uh, like a lot of people going to do today. Hey, Amen. Some of them going to listen, some won't. Come in the page 232. Because they already been in mind what they're going to do. That they ain't going to change their ways. They like bondage. Some people. I changed mine after I learned this. I, I don't know. Uh, you go to my house, there ain't going to be no tree in there. You go to my house, there ain't going to be no lights. Amen. On the house. I ain't going through that no more. It's going to be a reef outside of the door neither. Uh, it's going to be a reef outside of the door neither. A who? A reef. A reef. 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 Oh, okay. That's what that is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, ain't gonna be nothing that either, little David. Amen. A reef. Amen. I know. But let's just David know some of them. He probably can teach y'all a little bit more than what I can. Amen. So we're looking at our uh, page 232, the 29th verse. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nation from before thee, whether thou goest to possess them, thou secede them. And dwell in that land. Now, God is warning them, I'm going to give you the nations here. But when you take over the nation, don't follow them in what they're doing. Because at 35, take heed to thyself that thou be not a snare. So I look at the word snare, mean a trap. So sometimes things look good, and, it's not, and, and it's, it looks so good, it's a trap. That's because you don't understand the word of God. You'll fall into the trap. Once you understand the word of God, you go around it. You're not going to fall into it. You ain't going to be a part of it. So he said, take heed to thyself that thou be not a snare by following them. See, if they will follow them, they'll fall in the trap. Who's who going to have to whip them then? Yeah, the Father said, Holy Ghost got to put some on. God would have to put a whipping on them. Because they were disobedient to his law. So you got two types of laws here. You're going to see in the word of God that got it written down. Uh, you got two types of You got the law, amen, that man has, and God has a law. That's two two laws out there. The Mosaic law. Who? One Moses made. One Moses made? That's God's law. And the one man made. That's man's law. That's the only two laws you got out there. You got man's law. And the one Moses. Where, where Moses got that law from? God. God. Got it from God. That's why we know what the law is today. If you study the law, you can know what the law is. Uh, it's the Ten Commandments. That's the law. So once you study what the law of God is, and study the commandments of God, you see what God said what not to do. It's in there. It's in the Ten Commandments. It's in there. Give the Lord a hand, God. Amen. 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 Brother God and Sister God is in the house. Thank God for us. Amen. Amen. We did it with uh, Christmas this morning. Uh, Brother God and Sister God is on page 232. And we're on uh, the 30th verse, 12 and 30. And we want to find out what God word says about Christmas, that Christmas is not in the box. We didn't already determine that. And that uh, is Jesus Christ's birthday, but everybody else getting the gifts. Mm -hmm. They use his birthday to get the gifts. Take heed to thyself that thou art not snared by following them, 
after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. He said, I don't want you to go find out how they serve their God. I want you to go find out their way, the way they do things. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, so Christmas is a way that the heathen did, brought into Christianity. Let's get that 31 verse. Thou shalt not do as unto the Lord thy God for every abomination to the Lord. So the abomination is something that is wicked, vile, disgusting, and what God hates. That's what abomination is. So he wanted the children of Israel, I don't want you doing this, and it said, abomination the Lord, which he hated. Now notice it. Right there, after abomination, he said he hate that. Yeah. So if I, if I do things that God hates, what you think going to happen to me? As a preacher, I'm talking about. Preacher, person person with myself. Okay, terrific. I'm going to catch a what? Right. I done caught a lot of them, too. In my lifetime, I have caught a lot of women from God. I don't want no more. Yeah, I want some? Go ahead. I'm going to just give you the word. And then I'll be free of it. But I done delivered the word. It ain't on me. It's going to be on the people that hear in the word of God. I like this life. It's a good life. So here he's saying that he hated. Have they done unto their gods? They, they did that. If you go study about uh, Romans, what they did in their celebration, this is how they celebrated. The Romans did it was Christmas. They drank. They danced. And they worship that God in a small G. Yeah. That's why it's in the scripture. I want you to go and worship that God in this celebration. Now today, are they doing it today? Oh yeah, they got Christmas parties. What do they do at the Christmas party? Mm -hmm. They drink. Mm -hmm. They dance. Mm -hmm. And some of them exchange gifts. Yeah. And some of them don't. But I guarantee you, they both are do the dancing and the drinking. Oh, yeah. You see, don't, don't follow after that. They cuss them. That's they cuss them. That's the way they party mm -hmm. on Jesus Christ's birthday. Who birthday? Jesus Christ's birthday. They party. They drink. Yeah. Have a good time. And what else you got under that tree? You got a bunch of little owls under there. You got Mary and Joseph under there. And you got the baby Jesus under the tree. Hold your finger there, and we're going to come back to do the Romans. We're going to go and exit the 20th chapter and see what God says about that. So we get a better understanding of what's going on. 20 and 3. That's page 89. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's small g. Thou shalt not make into thee an engraving image. All the powerful stuff here. Or any likeness of anything that's in heaven above. Where Jesus Christ came from. Yeah. He came from heaven. So now we got some black Jesus. And we got some white Jesus. Watch out, brother God. They're going to have some Mexican Jesus too. <laughs> Oh, we're gonna make this, we're gonna bring this guy closer to home. Tell the truth, baby. Oh yeah. <laughs> I thought my God. So don't do it, you say. Don't make it the last of this thing in heaven. That's where Jesus comes from. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that is in the earth beneath. Anything under the earth. Yeah. And that is in the waters under the earth. God is covering everything. He's covering heaven. He's coming to earth and thing under the water. You can't get this thing no plainer than that. He ain't leaving nothing out. I don't want you doing that, he said. Don't make any image a likeness of, you know what the word, anything? No, anything is anything. Hey, man. We good with the dictionary and pick up nothing. <laughs> Fifth word, thou shalt not bow thyself to them, nor serve them for the Lord thy God in the water. That make God jealous when you do that. It's kind of like a man and a wife. If somebody else comes in that marriage, they can become what? Jealous. Somebody playing, fooling around with their mate. Mm -hmm. So they become 
Jealous. God is the same way. He's a jealous God. Amen. And he's telling us what makes him jealous. Mm -hmm. is a little bit of hours that man make with his hand. Mm -hmm. You bang them in your house. And thank God is pleased with that. He ain't happy. Mm -hmm. You're going to see why he ain't happy. Because he's jealous. Then in the what? Y'all know what the nicotine is? Mm -hmm. That's lawlessness. That's another uh, uh, interpretation of iniquity is lawlessness. We breaking his law. He's telling us not to do it, and we breaking the law and doing it, and saying it is all right. Hmm. That was a man saying that ain't nothing wrong with it. Let me see what I wrote down here from the Pope. The Pope, or oh, I must have wrote it on something else. Because I wrote on a piece of paper, I don't see it here. Let me see if I got it on the paper here somewhere. The Pope said that there's nothing wrong. Uh, I, I, I could have been coming as close as I can to it. Because uh, I want to say it word by word what he said. The Pope said there ain't nothing wrong with uh, with, with uh, sin, uh, uh, flesh, uh, and the sin. There ain't nothing wrong with it. Uh, don't, don't, don't take it to the, uh, make it a thing, you know. Yeah. There ain't nothing wrong with it. And I said, okay, so what I did, I went to Romans, I went to Romans 6 and 23. Mm. Romans 6 and 23 says, the way to the sin, yeah. and the Pope said, oh, there ain't nothing wrong with it, that ain't going to kill you, in, in the sin. Huh? What did the Pope say? He said, ain't nothing wrong with, 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 with uh, the flesh of the sin. Let me, let me get it and read it directly from my paper here. I might have it on here. I want to these papers. I had to write it down. It said, Brother Joe, Brother Joe, he hungry. And he wanted, he wanted to know exactly what the Pope has said. Yeah, let me see if I can find that for Brother Joe and see exactly what the Pope said here. Uh, it, it was on the phone. And, uh, okay, Pope Francis. I, I wrote it down on something. I thought it was on my other paper. Pope Francis says, sin of the flesh aren't that serious. Really? He said, sin of the flesh is not that serious. Not that serious. Not that serious. So what I did, come with me. I got y'all fingers all over the place. I got y'all fingers in Deuteronomy. I got you in Exodus. And now we're going to go to Romans. See if you, got, uh, if you can go three different places with your fingers. <laughs> Let's go to Romans. I would like to go to the Word so you can go back to that. And then you can look it up for yourself that it, it didn't come from me. Amen. The words that I speak, I'm not speaking of my own. I'm speaking what the words say. Page 12, 28. Page 12, what? 28. Thank you, Brother Charles. 623. 623. Page 12, 28. Yeah. Okay, let me see if I can get there. 623. For the wage of sin is what? Yeah. But the gift of God's eternal life to our Lord Jesus Christ. So that is a way out of sin. God gives us a way out. Mm -hmm. Now, if we want to take that way out and we want to stay in sin, like the Pope said, ain't nothing wrong with it, uh, said that uh, of the flesh uh, aren't that serious. It is serious to the king. Mm -hmm. Sin with Because the payment for sin is death. Mm -hmm. So it will kill you. Unless you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior and get out of it. Mm -hmm. And it won't kill you. Mm -hmm. So you got a way out. I like the way out. I took, I took that way out. Now come back with me. Amen. Did you get that, Brother Joe? No. Okay, come back with the 20th chapter. Uh, and now we see that visit and iniquity of the father upon the children until the third and fourth generation. Isn't that what? Now, some people say they love the Lord. But according to the scriptures, and if you're doing them things, that you're hating them. And so you can ask anybody today that to pray to hours and ask them if they love God, they'll tell you they do. I guarantee you. They'll say they love the Lord. That ain't what the word said. The word said you don't love them. And you don't know that. You think you do. But the word said you hate them. So I either I gotta go with what you saying, or I gotta go with I'm a, I'm a word 
preacher. Amen. What kind of preacher I am? Word. Word. If anybody asks you whose side I'm on, tell them something, please. Well, I'm on the Lord's side. And if you're on the Lord's side, I'm on your side. If you're not, well, eight boom coon, you can be my eight boom coon. I'm not on your side. So here, God said, you hate him. Now notice the sixth verse. So I'm mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep what? So in order for me to show that I love God, I can't be doing that. I used to talk to Adam. I used to pray to him. I didn't know a little better. I took all my little hours, and I, I was going to throw them away. And my sister said, give them to me. And I said, well. I was a baby Christian. I didn't know a whole lot, you know. Mm -hmm. I was about to get Maybe she could do something. <laughs> and I gave him that. And I got him back. Hey, if it ain't good for me. It ain't good for him. I said, give me them things back. I was trying to get them back. <laughs> so I did it strong. Nobody. I didn't get them back. So it's good to have knowledge of God's word, what he hates mm -hmm. and what he loves. And because I can say that I love God the whole time I was doing it. Didn't know he, it, it, at the time I was hating him. I, oh, no, I, you couldn't make me bleed up. Mm. But the word said it was. Right. So he tell me the ones that he showed mercy to is them that love me and what? My. Keep my commandments. That's how you show you love God. First find out what his commandments are. And then when you study the commandments of God, you want to do them. If nobody else doing them, make sure you do them. Don't go on with somebody else doing them. Come back with me to page 232, Good Romans, and we're going to go to the 32nd verb. We did the 31. Now we're going to go to the 32nd verb. What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto nor diminish from it. He didn't want us to add to his commandments. He didn't want us to take nothing away from his commandments. He know what he want to say. I know sometimes we want to help God. We want to what? Help. And we want to say a few things ourselves. Yeah. That ain't good. Get you in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody just say, get you in trouble. You don't want to do that. Go learn what he say. Say what he say. Preach what he, what he say. Amen. What he say is good and what he say is bad. Amen. Don't worry about the people. God will take care of them. Don't worry about the what? God will take care of the people. You know, just like he can take care of you. If you don't do what is right, he'll take care of you. So you don't want that to happen. Amen. So come with me now to the book of Le Leviticus 18 and 1, page 142. Page 142. That's Leviticus. My God. 18 and 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel, and said unto them, And the Lord your God, after the doors of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwell, shall ye not do. So they was in Egypt, that's where they lived. He right. said, so Where you dwell there, where you live there. I don't want you picking up what they, do. what they was doing in Egypt. When you was in bondage, I don't want you to pick that up. A lot of times you can go to places, pick up things from other people yeah. that you're around. Yeah. And also, don't do that. <clears throat> don't pick up what they're doing wrong. All this awesome stuff here. And after the doors of the land of Canaan, I don't want you to pick up that way as easy because they ain't doing right. Whether I bring you shall you not do. Neither shall you walk after their audience. So you know what the audience is? I said, walk. Oh. Now notice how I said it earlier. You got two laws. You got the law of man and the law of God. So man has a law. He governs that law according to the nation he lives in. That's his custom. That's the way he do things. So if you go into that land, that's what, uh, that's what happened to Daniel. Uh, Lord of mercy, got in captivity. Right. And the three Hebrew boys, uh, the king said, now, look here, uh, uh, when, 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 when we sound the trumpet, you got to bow down and worship my 
my image. Three more balls and now look at King. King, we're not careful now. We was careful before because you king. And you had to tell us what to do. But right now, King, we not careful what we about to say to you. We ain't gone down. Watch out. All the king got mad. The Bible says he got furious. And it said, heat it up. That's it. Good day. Seven times hotter. And the Bible said a strong man that threw the three Hebrew balls in the fire, it burned them up. What happened to the three Hebrew balls? Ain't that hot? Now you smoke. And the king looked down in there and he said, I see a fourth one. Look like the Son of God. God has made a believe out the king. Yeah, yeah. How you know the Son of God look like? God gave him a revelation of who his son is. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And the king got the three who he got them out of there out of that and promoted them. <laughs> Looked like they was getting demoted. Yeah, Don't worry about it happening in your life. It may look like you get demoted. You getting ready for promotion. Level what? Promotion. Promotion. It's because you're getting demoted. Come on now. It looked good for the dream of ball. Yeah. Oh, they didn't lost their position with the king. Oh, but now Go. the king got them out of there. And then you go find out they got they got prosperous. Right. Because they didn't do what the king wanted. They followed the law of God. Oh, God. Instead of the orders of a man. Point one. You shall do my judgment. Do my what? Yes. A lot of folks don't want to be judged. You know what Paul said about it? You mean to tell me you ain't got nobody in your church that can't judge between your brothers? Y'all yeah. go on the law with one another before the unjust? Yeah. He said, ought to not be. What's wrong with y'all? Y'all yeah. ain't got nobody in your church that can judge. What's wrong with the church today? Mm -hmm. Ain't got nobody in that church to judge. You come here, we're going to judge you. <laughs> with the what? Word. With the word. Because the word going to judge the preacher. That's me. Yeah. And then it goes out to the pulpit. From the pulpit to the pew. From the pews outside the door. And the scripture says, if you judge yourself, you won't. Yeah. How you judge yourself? By the word. By the word. That's how we can judge yourself. By the commandment and laws of God, you judge yourself by God's word. And when the judgment day comes, you already got right with God. So now you won't have to be. Yeah. This ain't hard, brother. Sir. He telling you, you get it right. I want to judge you. Yeah. Leave that far as right. You should do my judgment and keep my word. I want you to judge and, and keep my order. I want you to keep my law. Because my laws are different now for man. So that's why I want you to keep it. Walk that in, and I am the Lord your God. Because said for her, you, sh you shall therefore keep some of my statutes. No, no. Oh, how many? Oh. I thought it was going to occur about that. See, y'all. Ain't working. Ain't working. Ain't working. Uh, you, you shall therefore keep. My statute and my judgments. Well, I'm telling you how to judge. Now, you can't judge somebody and you're doing the same thing. What you call that person? As a hypocrite. As a hypocrite. That's what the Bible calls them. The Bible calls them a hypocrite. Jesus Christ said, first, get that log out your eye. Then you see clear to take the speck out your brother's eye. So, what I got to do with Herman, I got to make sure that there ain't no log in his eye. That's why I can tell you about Christmas, because I done took the log out. Yeah. Now I'm going to see kind of clearly get a little speck out your eye if you hooked up with Christmas. Okay. So I can hit you where you'll get caught up in the money situation. Uh, yeah, you already can't pay your bills, and now you got more bills to pay. And you ain't paid for last Christmas yet. 
What's that, man? That's good. You should pay on that. What's that, man? God bless my said, there, Lord. You said, I'm going to keep my statutes and my judgment, uh, which uh, uh, if a man do, he should live in them, and I'm the Lord. So I have to live in his commandment. I have to live in his judgment and his statute. I have to live that way. I can't just live any kind of way. I can't slip and slide, dip and die, and then tell my I'm, I'm on my way to heaven. Yeah, okay. Don't work like that. Oh, uh, my Lord, that was Lord, my Lord, I'm going to have to quit. Amen. Come with me to Ezekiel 18. I got to hold this in here. Oh, my God, amen. Ezekiel 18 chapter. Oh, I need to go to that third chapter. Let me go to the 18 first. And she will be guys over there. I think that's all I need to know. I know that, that, that 18. 18 chapter. Ezekiel 18 chapter. Page 9. 16. Thank you, uh, Brother God. Uh, let's see what verse we're going to start at. Let's start at the 21 verse. We're going to get 9 17. We're going to start at the 21 verse. This is God, amen, telling Ezekiel uh, what can happen here. If the wicked would turn from all his sin and he committed and keep my what? My statue. That's, that's his law. That's his commandment. You do that. Amen. And, and, and do that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live and should not die. Now, this is when a wicked man, that's me, he talked about it. He was talking about me. And I turned from what I was doing that was wrong. Now I'm coming to Jesus as my Savior to do what is right. I didn't come to Jesus to come do wrong. I came to Jesus so that I can do right. That's awesome, man. All right. Which one uh, that is? Ezekiel what? 18 and 21. The 21 verse. And he talked to the wicked man. He, talk, he was talking to me uh, uh, at one time. Uh, 22nd verse. And all his transgression that he had committed, it should not be what? He ain't going to mention it. See, God is not like us. God said, I forgive you and I forget. There you go. People say, I forgive you, but I can't forget. Amen. Huh? Wait a minute. Say that again now. But the child always say, you ain't forgave him. You ain't forgave him. You ain't forgave him if you can't forget. Okay. You still sure remembering it. So how are you going to forget something that you can't forget? Uh -huh. You got to get you some. Jesus. Some Jesus. Somebody going around here. So if you can't forget... And the devil come back and play it again. Just by the time you thought you forgave him and forgot, he'd come back again. You know what they did. You know what they said. You don't have to take all that. Give them a piece of your mind. How many pieces you think you're going to have left? <laughs> Uh, Verse 20. 20? Uh, well, what is it? 18? But yeah. 20. Stay 20. Oh, you want 20? Oh, yeah. sir. Such a great old guy. Such a guy. Let's go to 20. Such a guy. She wants some more groceries here. You know, she got hungry. You know it's great, yeah. Uh, the soul that sent it. Is she what? Yeah. Oh, she didn't tell you what. He didn't want me to bring that out. Here she go. Uh, I bet he had it in this place now. <laughs> That's what we're dead with early. The way the sin is what? Death. Yeah. And folks said, hey, don't, 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 don't worry about all that. Uh, uh, say sin of the flesh aren't that serious. Hmm. They're very serious. That's folks say that. That's folks say that. Uh, I found the Pope, but, but, uh, <laughs> but y'all ain't not calling the Pope, not me. Uh, it was this God didn't come up here. <laughs> the soul that sinned, it, that's what's going to die. Lord, I want to stop sinning. Help me to stop sinning, Lord, right now. Help me to love. Help me to forgive, Lord. If I can't forgive, help me to forgive in the name of Jesus. Jesus. If I can't love, help me to love, Lord. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. See, I'm not going to put it on the father. It ain't going to bear that iniquity of what the father did. 
His name neither shall have fallen by that iniquity. Ain't God found him? Now, if you study the old, uh, going to the twin brother, they had to pay yeah. if they sinned. Here, he telling them, you ain't got to pay. He changed it. In Ezekiel, God did it. So what my parents did, I ain't got to reap that. Mm -hmm. There you go. When I do, my children ain't got to reap it. Right. It's up to them. That's right. I think that's fine. Amen. Now, when Adam sinned, we all died. Mm -hmm. Jesus came, now we can be all made alive. Hallelujah. So you don't have to stay dead. Hallelujah. I say you don't have to stay dead. Jesus came to make us alive. Thank God. Now get a lot of hands out for you. God is awesome, God. The son should not bear the name of the father, neither the father, and that iniquity of the son and the righteous of the righteous shall be upon him. And the wicked of the wicked shall be upon him. I think that's fair. God said, if you're doing wickedness, it's gonna be on you. Those that are doing righteous, gonna be on you. And if you repent from your wickedness, I'm not gonna remember what you did. Get a long another hand clap for you. He's awesome God. Thank God he can hear way out of this time. So he said, I shall show the live and not die. Amen. Thank God. Thank you, sister, sister God. Amen. 22nd verse. All his transgressions that he had committed, it should not be mentioned unto him. And his righteousness that he had done, he shall live. Now we get 23rd verse. Have I any pleasure at all? That the wicked should die? I take no pleasure in the wicked dying. Because I don't take no pleasure in that. Say the Lord God and not that, that he should return from his ways and live. That's what I would like to see him do. Oh, yeah. 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 I'd like to see him <laughs> return from his ways and live. Mm -hmm. Follow my commandments and my statutes. Not what man telling you to do out there. Look at 24th word. But when the righteous turn away, now this is the flip side, and this is the one that's doing right. But when the righteous turn away from his righteousness and commit iniquity and do according to all the abomination that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? He asked him a question. Yeah, he said, well, will, will he live? No. All his righteousness that he had done should not be mentioned. And his trespassing that he had trespassed in his sin, that he had sinned in them, shall he die. God is fine. <laughs> Whatever state I'm in, that's the way I'm going to end up. He's a fair God, a just God. He's judging his righteousness. He judges according to what is right. And if it's wrong, he throws it out. You want no part of it. He's a holy God. Amen. Amen. 25th word. Yet you say the way of the Lord is not equal. That's what Israel told God. Your way is not equal, Lord. Mm. It don't sound like your way is equal. Mm. Here now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal and not your ways unequal? Some people try to tell God how to run his business. So, you think they're going to win? I don't think they're going to win. So, I don't think that's the way it ought to be, God. I think it ought to do it this way. Yeah. Well, he knows which way you want to do it. He said, my way are not your way. My thoughts, I don't even think like you. That's okay, the Lord. Since your ways are not my ways, you don't think like me. Help me to change my ways to your way. Then help me to change my thoughts the way you think. I don't want to think like that no more. Oh, I'm going to some crazy thoughts here. So I don't want to think like he used to think. So that's what I like about the word of God. Now when Christmas comes, I don't have to go in bondage. And I don't owe nobody nothing after this day is over with. <laughs> and they don't have to send me my bills that I don't put on a charge card. 
I had a $10,000 card and I maxed it out. And I had to go to my friends to get a little bit more money. Because my family was a large family. And I had a lot of people. I had to pay back from last Christmas that got me something. Yeah. Watch it, man. Now I ain't got to do it. Uh oh, we not out of we not out of word. And then we ran out of time again. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.